Moses said, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you'll be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on your way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows that you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Such a happy gospel. <laughs> the life you save may be your own. Relationships matter. If you have ever done serious photography, you know about lenses and perspective. For example, two types of lenses are a standard 50 millimeter lens, which gives you, can give you a panoramic view, panoramic view, excuse me, and a macro lens. The 50 millimeter lens gives you a long view over a vista and sometimes a 360 degree sweep. 
A macro lens yields an extreme close-up of something like a flower, a bug, a leaf. Both lenses can feature the same subject, yet to take a panoramic view of a mountain range and a macro view of a wildflower on that mountain provide very different perspectives. Today, we must view Matthew's gospel with both lenses in order to begin to tease out some of what Jesus is trying to teach both his first century listeners and his 21st century ones. To do that, Jesus takes us all back to our Mosaic roots, the Ten Commandments. First, our 50 millimeter lens. Thomas Cahill, in his book, The Gift of the Jews, notes that there has never been an agreement by scholars about the exact number of the commandments, which are, of course, our Judeo-Christian standard of ethics. And yet most scholars have come to the conclusion that the original sentences in Hebrew were all bluntly brief so brief that each one may have been but one word, that is, a verb in the imperative form preceded by a negative prefix of one syllable. For example, on the order of no kill, no steal, no lie. Cahill says these utterly primitive basic injunctions would have easily fit into a prehistoric oral culture. Any nomad could hold up his or her ten fingers and teach them to the children. Okay, children, this is how we behave if we're going to exist together in community. How we live together matters. Being right may matter in the moment. Being in relationship may save your life. Thousands of years after primitive nomads taught their children how to live, a Montessori church curriculum called Godly Play names the Ten Commandments as the Ten Best Ways. They may be the best ways, yet we know full well that we human beings have never really learned how to live in or out of these teachings. It's usually my way or the highway. So now we switch to a macro lens for a new perspective with today's gospel. There's a whole lot of fighting going on in Matthew's first century community. Anger, revenge, divisions between people, violence, long-standing grudges among tribes, arbitrary divorces in which a man can abandon a woman for all sorts of reasons, from adultery to she never shuts up. <laughs> Israel in Jesus' day is in trouble oppressed by pagans from the outside and by rich aristocrats from the inside. People swear to God that a certain thing is true. They think that just by using the Lord's name, more people will believe that what they swear is truth. Jesus speaks to all these issues. As the Holy One who has come to fulfill the Mosaic law in real life, Jesus reminds people about the ethical way of living. Too many of his people have abandoned what they know to be God's best ways to live. Of course, before the first century, God had sent Moses, and then after Moses, a whole history of prophets, Elijah, Deborah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, just to name a few, God's people seemed to learn for a minute, and then life would interrupt. Off the people would go on their own merry way. You want something? Go get it. If it's something your neighbor has, whether that's your neighbor's animal, your neighbor's property, your neighbor's wife, who is, of course, an extension of property in ancient times, well, too bad, so sad. 
I have power or status over somebody you don't. I can take what you have. It's all about me. Jesus takes his people back to their roots. Love God, love each other. And regardless of the exact number of Mosaic commandments, there are really only two. They all address one or the other. Love God, love your neighbor. Jesus came to show us all the best ways to live, and he reminds people that being right is less important than being in relationship. Of course, a couple of thousand years later, we still don't get it, do we? Politicians and their followers dig not just ditches, but deep trenches, and then prepare to die in those trenches. You and I may disagree with each other, holding tightly to our own political, religious, or social ideals, yet do we turn our views into shovels, digging our own trenches, and alienating others, even if they're family? Too many families can no longer gather in peace around a holiday dinner table. School board members stand up and yell epithets at each other. Angry people disrupt town meetings, even getting into fist fights. Church leaders sometimes angrily and publicly disagree with each other. At other times, they speak civilly to each other in a meeting and then go outside. And in the parking lot or on the sidewalk, their true thoughts and feelings erupt as they swap passive aggressive barbs or vicious gossip. The saddest part about that is that people outside the church watch and listen. And then they say, ha, huh, if that's church, no thank you. I'd rather go to Panera or Starbucks. At least they act polite and write my name on the cup. <laughs> they may not mean it, but the atmosphere is nicer. I get too much of that craziness at work. I don't need it at church. Thank you very much. So sometimes I imagine Jesus shaking his head, putting his face in his hands, they just never learn, do they? Deep inside, they really do know how to live, but they don't do it. They keep using that macro lens, insisting on close inspection to examine slights, grudges, divisions. They've forgotten that God's desire is for people to love God and love each other, to honor each other as God's beloved creation. They keep thinking that to prove points, to argue, and to be right is more important than to keep an open heart and mind, to listen deeply to the other, to be in relationship. If you and I look around, it is easy to wonder if we human beings will ever truly learn the best ways to be God's people. To use an example way too close to many of us, including the preacher, in 2021, the divorce rate in America was almost 45% of all marriages. It dipped a little bit during COVID and then it bounced back. Many of us here today have gone through divorce. Many of us and our children left as collateral damage. Yet the preacher reminds you that as we read today's gospel, we must remember that Jesus taught out of his first century culture, not out of the 21st. I don't believe Jesus is passing judgment on our particular situations. Would he want us to act better? I think so. Does he understand? Look at us with compassion? I sure hope so. Sometimes not staying together is a matter of survival, especially for abuse situations. 
or it's a matter of greater and deeper life in the long-range perspective. Some of us have had to come to terms with our own demons before we could learn how to live more fully in peace with another person. It isn't that we meant to end up with fractured relationships. It just took a lot of life lessons for some of us. Perhaps that gives us more capacity for compassion. I think what Jesus wants us all to do today, just as he wanted when he taught his first century followers, is to ask ourselves whether what we say with our words matches what we do in our everyday lives. For example, every Sunday we say the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do we? Do we forgive our brother, our sister, our neighbor in the same way that God forgives us? If not, is there a path, however overgrown and narrow, to reconcile with another person? As one theologian has noted, the act of reconciliation is an extension of the grace God has extended to us. Grace that is interrupted and no longer passed along is no longer grace. Jesus looks around at you and me today. Jesus knows what is in our hearts and minds. Jesus knows we do not put God first and our neighbors or brothers or sisters or anybody else second. We like our own selves first. Yet here's the good news. Jesus loves us anyway. And more good news is that if we recognize that Jesus really loves us, then we have a choice. We choose to follow Jesus, and he shows us the best path to follow so we can be better and we can do better. It will take one step at a time, one day at a time, one kind action at a time, one generous offer at a time. It may take us a lifetime to get from a macro perspective to a panoramic one, Yet if we keep our eyes on Jesus, he will lead us there. Yes, we'll get there in God's time and with God's help. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, the one being the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with scripture. He ascended into heaven. The seed of the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, 
We've spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious, loving God, you know the needs of our hearts and invite us to hear your voice and to follow you. Receive our prayers as we pray. God of grace, you love us and invite us to extend that love and friendship, generosity and hospitality to all. Fill us with your grace that we may be a community of kindness and compassion. Guide our efforts as we strive to understand and dismantle the structures of racism in the church and the world. O oh God of light, hear our prayers. God of peace, we ask you to guide all leaders in our nation, the church, and all leaders throughout the world, that they will be instruments of justice and peace. Help us to walk in your light and invite others to share that light with us. O oh God of light, hear our prayers. God of creation, you have woven our bodies in the depths of the earth. Look upon the needs of a suffering world and bless all humanity. Bless us with the abundance of your spirit and presence that we may reveal you to our families, friends, and neighbors. O oh God of light, hear our prayers. Good and holy God, you fashion our lives day by day in your spirit. Increase in us your vision that we may see your hand at work in our community. O oh God of light, hear our prayers. We pray for all who are ill, especially Catherine, Anna Gardano, Bob Erskine, Jack, Rose, Lisa, Marissa Burke, Joy Ballou, David McAdams, Anne and Tom Romig, Arnita Berry, Heather, Jan, Dave Howe, Bill Ant, the people impacted by the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, the people of Ukraine, and those we name silently or aloud. O oh God of light, hear our prayers. Accept our prayers of thanksgiving especially for the life and witness of Absalom Jones and the Right Reverend Barbara Harris, those who have responded and will respond to people in crisis around the world, the ongoing, ongoing resourcefulness and commitment of our refugee response ministry, and those blessings we name now, either silently or loud. O oh God of light, hear our prayers. Welcome into your beloved community, those who have died. We pray especially for the over 28,000 people mm -hmm. who died in the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, and those we now name, either silently or loud. O God of light, hear our prayers. Gracious and loving God, we come before you with no gifts but ourselves. Accept and receive our lives that we may be manifestations of your presence. Let the light of your Spirit shine within and among us so we may share in the mystery of your purpose of blessing 
for all creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we can be against you, who are worthy, and I love you, 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 Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. I invite you to stand as you are able, and let us greet one another. The peace of Christ be always with you. It is a great joy to welcome you to St. Columbus Church this morning, a special joy to welcome those of you who are worshiping with us for the first time or the first time in a long time. And if you are here for the first time, thank you for joining us. We're really glad that you are here. Please help us welcome you by taking a moment now and fill out a welcome card. and You can place that in the offering plate as your gift to us today. St. Columbus is a church on a mission to live God's love. We carry that out in a host of ways. I commend to you to note that um, beginning next week is the beginning of the season of Lent, and I invite you to join us this Wednesday evening as part of our Wednesday night supper, and then followed immediately by some conversation about ways in which we might uh, prepare ourselves to enter into this season of Lent, and some of the offerings that are being offered here through St. Columbus and other practices that you may wish to engage in, offerings of prayer and support and small groups. So join us for that and uh, keep an eye out in the newsletter. Next Sunday, we'll be joined for our forum uh, by Sukrit Mishra, who is the director of Solar United Neighbors, and speaking about the opportunities for solar available here in D.C. and Maryland and Virginia. So please join us for that. And uh, this Sunday, uh, healing prayers will be offered during the distribution of communion. And so I invite you, if you wish to receive laying on of hands and prayers, you can pass your way through this little door over here, and there will be uh, healing ministers up uh, behind me. Lastly, we need to say goodbye today to Sandy McKenzie, who is moving and leaving. Um, Sandy, how long have you been at St. Columbus? Some number of years. <laughs> yes, four. Okay. Well, Sandy, uh, go with our blessing. Uh, let us pray. Holy God, our heavenly Maker, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, we thank you for the life and ministry and witness of your servant, Sandy. Bless and preserve him in this time of transition. Surround him with your loving care as he leaves this community and continues his earthly pilgrimage. Protect him from every danger and guide his steps to journey's end. This we ask in the name of the divine mystery who made us and loves us and travels the way with us. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Go in peace. And let us now walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself for us a gift and sacrifice unto God.
God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to our sovereign God. It is right in our hands and grace. God of blessing, we thank you always for making us in your image to serve the peace of all creation. You shared your name with our mothers and fathers, Sarah and Abraham, who left their home and became a blessing to all nations, Moses and Miriam, who went through sea and wilderness to the place of revelation, Deborah and Samson, who gave hope and justice to a people ruled by fear, Ruth and Jonah, who went to foreign soil and found a God who loves the stranger. From our ancestors in faith came Jesus, the Son of Promise, to fulfill the law, embody your love, and draw all people to himself. He accepted death to break its fearful hold. He was raised to life to share it in abundance. He comes again to break the bread and pour the wine of hope. Therefore, with all people whose story you have shaped, with women and men of faith in every part of the world, we glory in your generous love and sing in praise of you. We ask that your Holy Spirit will fall upon us and upon these gifts, that these fragile earthly things may be to us the body and blood of our Lord and brother Jesus Christ, who on the night that he was betrayed, gathered with his faltering friends for a meal that tasted of hope. Calling them to his table, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. As you eat it, remember me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. As on that night, so here and now, Jesus offers all that he was, all that he is, and all that he will be. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, we come in memory and hope, responding to your call and the promise that echoes from the dawn of all time. May mind and heart be held by your self-giving love, as we stand before the cross, approach the empty tomb, and praise the one whose name is lifted high above all earthly power. Receive our broken offering through your never-ending grace, and bind us in communion with all who share your gifts. Through Almighty God, in whom from the beginning of time and through the great expanse of space, all things are drawn into the ceaseless love of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God, whoever you are. Wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, you are welcome at Christ's table.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you have... Christ the Son be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. with the light of Christ, let us go forth to live God's love. Alleluia, alleluia.